Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to add attributes to the circle elements. So here they've got the, this is the, the stuff that we filled in the last exercise. And so now it looks like we're gonna do some more. The last challenge created the circle elements for each point in the data set and appended them to the SVG canvas. But D3 needs more information about the position and the size of each circle to display them correctly. A circle in SVG has three main attributes. The CX and the CY attributes are the coordinates. They tell D3 where to position the center of the shape of the SVG canvas. The radius R attribute gives us the size of the circle. Just like a rect Y coordinate and CY attribute of a circle is measured from the top of the SVG canvas, not from the bottom. All three attributes can use a callback function to set their values dynamically. Remember that all methods chained after data set run once per item in the data set. Here we have the data set, which means we're running the enter and then we're appending a circle and then we're going to do whatever. The D parameter in the callback function refers to the current item in the data set, which is an array for each point. It doesn't need to be D, it could be anything that you want. You just have to change whatever letter it is that you pass in as the parameter. You use bracket notation like D at position 0 to enter the values in the array. So add C, X, C, Y, and R attributes to the circle elements. Okay, so we're going to be adding a bunch of attributes, right? A, T, T, R. Whatever. Um, we're going to do this three times. And we want to add uh, C, X, C, Y, and R. So we want to add C, C, X, C, Y, and, and R attributes to the circle elements. Here we've got the circle elements. The C, X value should be the first number in the array for each item in the data set. Okay, um, I'm going to actually comment these out because I want to do a quick little thing. So this is going to be a callback function, and we'll say D, but I'm going to say data point. And then within here, we're going to pass, we're going to create a function. And let's console.log the data point. Okay, so now we're passing it in. Now, so our data, we're calling the data set, right? So it's there, 3478, 3478. Well, the, our, for our CX, uh, the CX value should be the first number in the array. Okay, so the first number is 34, which is in this ar pos array position, it's at position zero. So if we go position zero, then we get the 34109, da, 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 da. Okay, so that's what we want to do. We want to return that, the data point at position zero. Okay, and so now let's bring our CY attribute back in here, and we'll do the same thing. Function of data point, and um, I'm going to pull this out just so we have a little bit more. And so we console.log, and we say data point, and now we're running out the same thing again, but we, now we want the CY the CY value should be based off the second number in the array. So not this number, but the second number. So our data point at position one, right? Zero, one. Okay, and instead of saying console logging that so we can see it down here, we're gonna return that. And that is going to give us the data point at its next position. And uh, make sure uh, the value should be based off the second number in the array, but make sure to show the chart right side up and not inverted. Okay, we're going to have to think about that one. The R value should be 5 for all circles. So this one's easy. We just say R is equal to 5. Now we've got points everywhere. All right. Um, I don't think this is going to pass. I think that we need to invert them somehow. So the first element, um, so yeah, let's just uh, console.log the data point. So now we're going to be able to see where we're, we're printing through. The first circle element should have a CX value of 34. So 34, we've got it. And a CY value of 422. Okay, so let's see. First off, we want to check the height of this SVG unit. Okay, so the height is 500. And we want to have a value of 422, which is 78 minus uh, 500. So that tells me that if we did... Um, the height, right? So height minus the data point at position one. 
I'm going to talk about why I did position one real quickly. So the data points here, we're dealing, we're trying to get the CY value to match because the CX value is matching 34 and we're getting 34. So we want to do 78. But what we want to do is say 500 minus 78, which equals 422. So 500, which is the height of the scatter plot, minus um, 78, which is the, po the center of the point that we're looking for, and that's supposed to equal 422. So data point at position one, we're gonna get 78, and we wanna say the height, and if I put a comma in here, we can see the height is 500, so 500 minus 78 minus 78. And so this is what we want to do. We want to say H minus data point. And then we get 422. So if I run the test, now that pass. I hope this makes sense. It's a little tricky, but um, I tried to make it as clean as possible. So now that we've got the right answer, let's uh, get rid of the uh, comments. And we can see it the way it's supposed to be. We run the test to see that it works. We want to now make sure, well, first off, what can we do? Well, we can use, instead of using these um, uh, vanilla JavaScript things, we can get rid of the function word and just use arrow, arrow functions. And this will work for that purposes. And then, um, well, another thing we can do is do implicit returns, right? Instead of having the brackets and the return statement, we can just get rid of that and make it like that. So this one works, it works like that. And so we can refactor this as well and uh, get rid of these guys. I'm going to pull this out just a little bit so it's really clear. Um, no semicolons here because these are all chained together. And now we have a little bit cleaner code. But just for the sake of it, they do say that you should be using D. It's not required for the thing. But instead of saying data point, we can change this to D. And this would run the tests and pass and also this would run the test and pass. So that's just refactoring down. And I found that to be very frustrating when I was learning to code, that they taught you this way when you learned the other way. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you in the next lesson.